the inner ear, so the vestibular mechanism has the semicircular canals, which are uniquely designed to respond to movements of the body. By virtue of their orientation, because there are three canals and they're all at right angles to each other. So the movements of the head are mapped by a combination of the outputs of the sensory components, or these crystals, which are inside the semicircular canals. So activation of these sensory elements arrives from inertia. As your head rotates, the fluid in the semicircular canal tends to lag behind. The cilia, or like the hair cells, they're not real hair cells, they're, um, they're cilia, but they are like finger-like, hair cell-like projections, are stimulated by the relative movement of the fluid. And the vestibular system provides input to the proprioceptive system, which helps the body figure out where it is in space. So the information provided by the vestibular system works with the joints and the muscles and your visual system to help your body feel grounded. The cochlea is our auditory mechanism, and it's the size of a pencil eraser, and the fluid within it is the drop of the water. It's like a drop of water. So the structures are amazingly small and amazingly delicate, and it's amazing what the cochlea can do. So it's responsible for frequency or spectral processing as well as time analysis. So with spectral analysis, it helps to extract and define the different frequency components of a signal. And the cochlea is designed to sort out these incoming signals and determine their amplitude and identify their time. And it all happens in like microseconds so quickly. So the process that makes up the first level of auditory processing in the acoustic signal, and then there's subsequent processing that continues later on up the auditory pathway, ultimately to the brain. So we have an airborne disturbance that causes the tympanic membrane to move, and that movement is transferred to the oval window through the middle ear space. As the tympanic membrane moves inward and outward, the stapes foot plate in the oval window then moves in and out. And when the tympanic membrane moves in and out, so does the stapes foot plate. So a movement is directed, a compression and a refraction of the sound, and the complexities are directly translated into the cochlear fluid. When the stapes at the base of the cochlea compresses the fluid, the perilymph in the scale of vestibuli, Resner's membrane is then distended towards the scala media, and the basilar membrane is, is distended towards the scala tympani. A compression of fluid is sent through the scala vestibuli, and it's translated on the basilar membrane. A 100 hertz signal results in the stapes footplate moving in and out 100 times per second. And likewise for a thousand hertz signal or two thousand hertz signal, so it's pretty amazing. And the periodic vibration is then translated to the basilar membrane, where it initiates a wave action, which is known as the traveling wave. High frequency sounds are processed at the base or the beginning of the cochlea, and low frequency sounds travel further up the cochlea to the apex. The traveling wave separates out the frequency components. So there, is an, there are outer hair cells and inner hair cells specific to every frequency that we hear. And humans can hear from 20,000 hertz to 20 hertz. So we have a very wide range of hearing. But believe it or not, we have the least wide range of hearing out of all the mammals. So those sounds that dogs and other animals can hear that we can't hear is because they have a longer basilar membrane so they have more room to process higher frequency sounds than we do. But our basilar membrane has cells to process from 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz. And remember, high frequency sounds are processed at the base or the beginning of the cochlea. So the traveling wave goes to its best place on the basilar membrane. Once it finds its frequency it's that it's the sound it's translating at, its best frequency, it grows and it swells, and the outer hair cells move up and down, and it triggers 
a message to the inner hair cells that it's time to fire to the auditory nerve, that it's time to let the auditory nerve know. So like I said, it is an excellent frequency ana analyzer because it has graded stiffness, mass, and width. Remember, what determines frequency? Stiffness, mass, mass and width. And there we have it on our basilar membrane in the cochlea. So what happens is the traveling wave of fluid, the stapes pushes on the base of the oval window, the traveling wave goes, it goes to its best frequency. There are outer hair cells specific to every frequency we sound. When the, we hear, when the sound wave hits the outer hair cell specific to its frequency, the outer hair cell moves up and down and amplifies it. And then that message is sent to the, auditor, the inner hair cell and the inner hair cell, which receives afferent innervation up to the auditory nerve, says it's time to fire, here's your message. So, like, the wave of fluid goes to its best frequency, and then it disappears. It goes back down. So the inner ear is responsible for performing frequency and time analysis of the signal. The movement of the tympanic membrane is translated along from the stapes foot plate to the fluid of the scala vestibuli. The compression of the fluid is translated to the basilar membrane, and the disturbances are a traveling wave. The cochlea is tonotopically organized. It's organized by frequency, with high frequency sounds processed at the base and low frequency sounds processed at the apex. The point of maximum excursion of the basilar membrane the traveling, that is caused by the traveling wave determines the frequency of the information that is transmitted to the brain. Frequency analysis of the basilar membrane is determined by its stiffness, its thickness, and its width. The basilar membrane is stiffer, thinner, and narrower at the base, where high frequencies are processed, than at the apex. The excitation of the outer hair cells occurs primarily as a result of a shearing effect of the cilia on the tops of the outer hair cells. The, then they send a message to the inner hair cells, and the inner hair cells fire to the auditory nerve.